this is the, the May 21st, 24, uh, 2024 edition of the building committee. And uh, I know we have a relatively small representation. And I think it's going to be a relatively short meeting. I think I have some, some positive news to share with everybody. Perhaps get some input uh, from all of you. Uh, but we are now entering that next phase, which we've been waiting for for the last few years, which is the construction phase. So in front of you, you have the agenda. I want to thank Deb for compiling the agenda. Attached to that is the minutes from the previous meeting, so you have that. Uh, the other document you have, which you know, we can detail if you want, uh, is Project Dog, which is the, the program that we've used, uh, Schoolhouse uses, to compile all of the file subjects and bits that come in. So it's all electronic nowadays. Um, so I'll touch on that momentarily. So, just to talk about the bid updates as a quick review. Uh, first of all, SMA will not be here today. Schoolhouse will not be here today. Uh, so you're, you're stuck with me. Okay. Uh, I'll and I'm going home. That's the reason we're here. Uh, I will do my best to report out uh, on behalf of SMA and, and uh, Schoolhouse. But the bid documents, as you know, the file submits came back uh, end of April, early May. I think it was early May, actually. So you have uh, the project doc document has outlined every single file submit that came in. You can see the, the amounts that were bid. And at that point, I was concerned, to be honest. Uh, and meeting with that SMA and schoolhouse, uh, when we were looking at the low bids for each of the file submit areas, we were approximately six hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars over estimate at that point. Uh, so we were very troubled. Uh, we were kind of projecting out what would be happening this afternoon at this particular committee mem uh, committee level and what would be happening at 5 o'clock in the board of trustees level. Uh, just projecting out if we were already that high of a budget, we then go out to contract, out to bid for the general contractor, what would happen at that point. Uh, I think we would have some very difficult conversations to have. Fast forward to May 13th. Right. I'm sort of going back and forth between the documents and what I'll be sharing with the board tonight. The slide that the board's going to see this evening. Uh, May 13th was the, the deadline for the general contract for bids to come in. We had three bids. Uh, they ranged from overall about six million uh, with the low bid. The high bid was about 6.8 million. Uh, the low bid was Kiter Corporation, so they did receive the uh, contract. And when all said and done, we are within our budget. So how Kiter was able to go from a six to eight hundred thousand dollar old estimate and subbids, how they were able to come in oh, yeah, well, so that we're under, under estimate. So good news. Okay, so how that happened, I'm not sure what happened behind the scenes, but right now the money is looking okay. Uh, so again, that was May 13th. Uh, we've been compiling all the, all the documents. Uh, I believe a signed contract should be happening later this week or early next week. So we'll have Kiter officially on board uh, within the next several days. Uh, so there's some good news there. To the point where next Tuesday, May 28th, is going to be the kickoff, the construction kickoff meeting. So normally Tuesday mornings, I've been meeting with SMA and Schoolhouse, just sort of progress updates. Uh, that's going to transition into Kiter overseeing those particular construction meetings. Uh, so the kickoff is next Tuesday. Uh, the building permit. Uh, has been submitted, will be submitted this week. Uh, the city is telling us it's up to 30 days for approval, so we're trying to get that ball rolling as quickly as possible. Uh, as of this morning, our belief, uh, Schoolhouse and working with Kiter, uh, we believe actual construction most likely will begin some point mid-June. The builder's risk, uh, the insurance uh, that's required, that's going to be covered by the city through the, the city insurance, that's Mayo. And then lastly, uh, on this particular slide that you see behind me, uh, probably the fun stuff for the trustees will be to, to oversee and organize a groundbreaking ceremony, uh, which we'll talk about in the board. So I just want to share that with all of you. It's sort of been the weeds for, for several months. Uh, a date I'm going to recommend this evening to the board, uh, hopefully a Tuesday in June. Right now we're sort of looking at June 11th. And uh, unfortunately, June 11th is not good for Helen Piantini. We all know Helen, the project manager for, manager for SMA. Uh, she's unavailable. But we're hoping that the trustees could be there, you know, administrators, uh, obviously our, the horticulture instructors, representatives from SMA, the schoolhouse, Kiter. Uh, Senator Comerford will be invited. 
Uh, so as part of the, the revenue pot that we have, uh, she was able to earmark uh, through the capital bond project through the state some money for this particular project. So I think she would be uh, a worthy person to be here. Uh, Smith College also gave us a, a very yeah. substantial donation uh, a couple of years ago uh, during the, the early phase of this. So I think Smith College would be invited to partake. Uh, EEA, uh, which uh, is the Energy and Environmental Affairs, uh, they are the state agency that came through with 1.2 million at the 12th hour. Uh, we're going to highlight some of the, the wood species in the, in the new building. Uh, they should be invited. The EOE, which is the Executive Office of Education, uh, they're the ones who oversee the Skills Capital Grant programs. That's the biggest chunk of money that we have on the yeah. the project. That they should be invited. And then lastly, and not least, Obviously, all of you are really members. What about Mava? Right. Um, what about uh, Jim Governor's office and Long Night? Um, about Time <laughs> Sort of the, the the operations of the building committee. So now that we're moving into the construction phase, um, you know, hopefully having some form of progress in the middle of June and of June. Uh, I think the, the viability of this particular committee would be uh, sort of an advisory committee when it comes to potential uh, change orders, work orders. Uh, you know, if something comes forward. Uh, I'd love to have as much input as possible. At the end of the day, any decision is on the trustees. So I think the advocate for the trustees, if a change order comes forward, I think they're going to want to know as much input as possible. And my recommendation is that we don't necessarily have a standing building committee meeting. I don't want to waste people's time. Um, but as construction occurs, as things come up, I would love to meet with all of you. And so the experts to come together and say, yes, yeah, this makes sense for a change order. No, it doesn't. Why don't we push back on this? I'd love to have that input from all of you uh, that I can then bring to the trustees for the official vote. So uh, SMMA and Schoolhouse felt that was you know, definitely part of the right decision. Um, I just share that with all of you. The format of the meeting, this in person and virtual. The building committee? No. The, the, the job meeting, weekly or bi weekly job meeting. I can ask out there. I would, I would like to see it virtual so I can attend and be part of the meeting member. And from my computer, it would be a wise decision for us to be here, show our presence as much as possible, be listeners and advisors, where we realize we're. We're not there to run the show. We're there to so, yeah, and, and um, speak up when it's appropriate and hold people accountable. So, plain and simple, in my opinion. My only question is the, the role of an individual building committee member or a trustee on that particular right? So, well, uh, my. Um, in the past, uh, building committee members have attended job meetings. Okay. Um, and, and as, as 
another set of eyes and ears. Uh, we've got some great expertise right here. So that's my two cents. Everything's made some of, some of these players that run these meetings will be away on, on um, sharing their screen and marking it up well and just seamlessly and it's just incredible. Somebody that's first doing that and that should be um, well that's going to have to be um, well the architect should be running the meeting and doing the notes um, and I don't know if that's spelled out in the general conditions part of this text but I'm guessing it is. And it will be important for us to get copies of the job. Just in a, a, what they call a structural turn the page virtual meeting. We had people all across the state that were able to present. Structural engineers, the architects, the university, consultants. Anything else? Questions? Can you thoughts me better understand what this document is here? So this is the record of all of the file subdivisions that came in. Okay. Uh, you can see what the trade type was, what there did happen to be. So. The point of sharing with all of you, I just wanted to give you a bird's eye view of some of the dollar figures. And I think we were, we weren't quite sure you know, through this entire process as the estimates kept coming back. I think we kept getting blown away with how high these estimates were. Yeah. And then when the bids came in and it was six to even thousand dollars over the estimate, we took all the low bids. I, I just want all of you to, to see that it cost a lot of money. Yeah. So. Um, when we met some months ago, there was a request to better understand that if the heat was going to be delivered via rain floors, what savings might that offer in the, the original heating strategy? And that wasn't determined at the last meeting. And I think there was a desire to go forward and bid out and then to make adjustments and, and change orders. But I just, just for what it's worth, m and heating here is 1.3 million. It's 20% of the budget, and so I would be optimistic that we could see some real savings as we tighten down on what we're going to use. So, uh, so yeah, but, that's uh, what I, what I, Jonathan, uh, Adam, the low bidder, on code. I, I, I'm merely just uh, noting uh, that that the M and W was. Uh, uh, you're right. Forgive me, Adams is over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, so, yeah. but your point taken. Yeah, fifteen percent then. But so sort of optimistic that there was going to be some savings here today. A six million dollar project is not a small project by any means, and I think it's hard fought to work on. But I'm trying to keep a little bit of an eye on finding some funds that can be used to renovate the existing to make sure that that stays. The city's in a tough spot financially. I think we may have to find our own money. Well, that's why I think we need to stay involved. Absolutely. I'm committed to that in one way or another, however I can. And um, so, yeah, it was like Eric's indicating that conversation was put on the table. Didn't really have time to shake that out, but get it up to bid. Let's go from there. Unfortunately, a credit change order, you can get pennies on the dollar. Um, but. I think we made the right decision at the time. We needed to get this out mm -hmm. and this and start moving forward. It was our only choice. We had to get mm -hmm. yeah. If there are um, changes that we're interested in pursuing, we should be really clear about that right now before they start buying things and it's going to be go, go, go. So if there are some sort of alternatives or credits or alternatives that we want to pursue, we need to be next year. I've lost track of just what's coming. Well, you've thought of some things, and you did. one big issue was I served some savings garnered by the rain 
heat system um, for the Air Force. I imagine we still need some of the air for heating spa recovery, fresh air, that sort of thing. Um, so I don't yeah. think you're going to get rid of all that. I think on this game, you're not going to save a lot of money because you're still going to have to heat those spaces in those areas. And this radiant enables these guys in the shop. They have a decent working area for that equipment. And I don't really think we're going to save a lot of money at this stage. We're under the budget. we got to go with this. All right. Because we're still going to have to design something to pick up that niche. And that's a good and so I guess I'm not understanding why why do we need to design something that we get people on the radiant is designed to keep building. No, the radiant is what I'm saying. If you get rid of the radiant, if no, you take no, no, space no, no, and not the air air source. No, you were saying take the radiant out. No, no, I think the radiant no, no, is no, the no. absolutely okay. yeah. And then can Maybe we deliver the cooling in a more cost effective way? I, I'm certain you need cooling in the systems rooms. Just um, in the classrooms and the office, no cooling in the shops. I think we need it in the simulator room. It's going to be a lot of. I think you have the flash Oh, that's flash. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. in there. Yep. Okay, you've got a lot of heat there. Right. But no cooling in the, in the shop. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. What's, the, um, what's the final outcome with the generator that's being the connections to the generator it's within our product in our product it's in our product all right i know one other thing that was kicked around was the concrete apron out in front of the overhead doors that <coughs> uh, don't quote me, but I believe that was candidate. Seriously? Don't quote me. I'll okay. Have to follow that. Is there any need for it to be concrete versus asphalt? Right in the door. Last we met, it was asphalt and it's pervious asphalt, okay. which needs some maintenance. So, a fairly long discussion and, and uh, a bark um, indicated if I got to if I got to send out a kid with a blower every so often I'll do that and that's what you'll have to do right okay so we had a follow-up meeting with uh, Richard's side. we can confirm this next Tuesday we're going to have to go meeting but uh, I believe Richard Zion actually corrected us I think the conversation we were having at this committee it was that previous material it wasn't actual asphalt but I believe Richard Zion was designing so, but that's not what well, you said, Skirt. I thought you meant around the footing of the, the building. No, no, no. In front of the whatever, six, yeah. eight foot wide concrete apron at the overhead door of the shop. Okay. Right, that would be the. Okay. But the, the overall service here, the conversation was that that material was. Black I thought the it was. Really I, think we, I think we thought that it was going to be impervious. Not impervious, it was going to be. Well, that pervious material that will water rain through, but if it fills so up, maintain, we have to maintain, and they're going to inspect it every year. But I want to say, we can confirm next week, that in following up with virtue design, after that meeting that we were having that big debate on, virtue design said, no, it's actually asphalt, that's what they're designing. Okay. So we didn't buy the city, didn't require that? We had to work, the stormwater had to account for the impervious right. material of asphalt for this okay. year. Right. So as long as, that, as long as that's met, I, I I was under the impression that it was pervious black asphalt, whatever the proper terminology is, where water can trickle down through, it can get clogged up by dirt and debris, which does need some maintenance. Blah blah blah. I thought that's what was in our design, but whatever we'll shake that out. Feel better next next June. <laughs> <laughs> and what's Mr. Smith's involvement? Going to sit in on the job meeting? He's always invited. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And he's right now working, talking about the generator and the service panel. He's, that's his project right now. Put that together. So do we do we have change orders? Do we need to get clarification on asphalt versus impermeable? Do we need to, for your recommendation, get clarity so that they don't buy the HVAC well, for the shop space and they, 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 they still have it's still got it. Kiter's got to get the subs contracted. All right, the file so bids are, are established. He has to buy out the non file sub bids, okay, and contract with them. So the HVAC and plumbing is established, the electrical is established. Um, so those major trades are established. And so the, the shop drawings, the middle package and get approved, they can't buy anything for at least a couple months, probably. Okay. Okay. We have time. Okay. Agreed. Mostly. If, if there was something specific change that we knew specifically, it would be good to go ahead and move right. that forward. So we'll that should come up. It sounds the like the very real. first job meeting. Yeah. I don't know those Do we have a time for job meeting? I want to say it's 10 a.m., but I'll call yeah. And, and we're going to throw out the time for groundbreaking, or were you? As we asked all of you today, in the board okay. Meeting. Well, what do you, general? What do you attendees think for time that are here present now? Day of the week. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm here all day, so. <laughs> I'd love to use the new truck, so before or after lunch. Oh, okay. No. I may or may not be able to. So, don't play around with it. It's virtual. So, if we have lunch, you do here. God, I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> Take advantage of that because he doesn't. Yeah, I heard it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. Um, um, I would later the better for me. Uh, I'll throw out the clock. I I think it is meritorious to have the building committee recommend us pursuing a third party solar to see what that would look like. At some point, we're going to have a completed design. Putting solar on the roof is not part of this project currently. I think it should be. And I'd like to see whether uh, solar developers would be willing to put it on the roof for an agreeable PDA. So we would be buying power off the roof in lieu of buying the well, We had some conversations with the power options a few okay. weeks back. I'm not sure. I mentioned at one of the meetings, but basically we kind of started that conversation a little bit. Um, there's a vendor the city recently partnered with called Power Options, you may have heard of them, and they kind of broker out PPA agreements on solar deals. Not my expertise, but we've at least initiated the conversation. Are you obliged to use them? No. Okay. Uh, happy to chat more too and share well, options. That should be part of getting these sort of things out in the job meeting to start pursuing these, these options. The only concern I would have would be that if the engineering has to be slightly different to meet the solar expectation for they did mm -hmm. indicate the roof is designed to Correct. handle just uh, those little things. Solar panels. Let's do it once. And my yeah. takeaway, what I communicated to them was, you would expect the roof to be completed before the building is 100% done. So basically, next spring we could start to maybe even get get some panels on the roof. But there may also be changes to the breaker box, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah, just to be cool. mindful if we need to put a chase in that Fair sort enough. of stuff. Just, just try and get right. ahead of it so we don't have to pay twice later. This gentleman named Ben Weil is uh, starting as CAPA's director, interim director next Monday, next Tuesday rather. Um, so he has a lot of expertise in this area that I can't offer. Okay. So I'm excited to kind of connect with him, brief him on all this, and um, maybe we could chat another time, Jonathan, just about. Uh, uh, his name again, Will? Ben Weil. Ben? W-E-I-L. Yeah. He's a... He's a PhD in like building energy, and he's a professor at UMass. He's been there 13 years, um, so it's exciting to uh, have his sort of intellectual leadership 
involved with all this. And what's his role with the city? He's going to be the director of climate action and project administration. And he's leaving you mass. That, that was going to be my question. <laughs> he's the interim director starting next week until August. So and then, he'll be with the city full time, or is he going to be with the city full time until then? And then the city's obligated to put the job out there. Um, I don't want to. I don't know. Like he'll. I would not be surprised if he chose to keep the job after that. Um, he would have to apply for it and get the job after that. Yeah. Okay. Back to the, uh, the groundbreaking ceremony. I would just advocate. I was pushing for something earlier in June. Just because session and the students are still here as a school I think students should be there as much as possible Good point. So I instructors before you like, try to deal with closing up shop and getting up in the summer so yeah. I would recommend something for uh, okay the time so we have the students. throw out a time so 7 a.m. just be <laughs> 10 o'clock would be a good time okay no, you bring up this point. I was kind of thinking that. But I'll give it a different time, Mr. Quadro, we can bring you, know, you cider donuts if you'd like. Here we can have, you know. I'd be happy to. No, it's a good point. Is there a seasonal snack down. Yeah. No, we'll have to figure out how to do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think, I think, yeah, a, a courtesy call saying, hey, this is going on. Um, I will say the, the insurance company hasn't been super responsive to my request to solidify the builder's risk policy. So just a comment that, you know, before construction officially starts, we should have that in place to protect the folk in the city. Um, and also just in the procurement front, I'm working on executing the contract with um, Kyder, working with Crystal, basically need to just change like the names and dates and logistics of the city's contract. In addition to that, I'm adding all the procurement documentation that shows that you all, we all procured all these services from designer to pre-qualification to awarding a contract. So it's a lot of boring advertisements, other documentation showing that we meet all the state's requirements. Um, so our practice at the city is just include that all in the actual contract. Kyder won't see all of it, they'll see that contract itself, but if this contract was ever audited in future years, ideally everything's there mm -hmm. to show that this was all done above board. Um, I didn't quite hear you about the insurance company, what you say, and they are being responsive or not responsive? They have it been adequately responsive okay. to my emails. I've followed up several times. Yeah. Um, this is over the $3 million threshold yeah. that requires but, a, a unique builder's risk policy, basically. Yeah. So, but Kyder can get contracted with, he can start doing his paperwork, Correct. get his contractors on board. Correct. This is a he policy. He come on site and yeah. start physical work until we get that in place. Correct. Yeah. So I'll do my best to continue following up with them on that front. I'm not overly concerned about it. Just want you to be aware. He's in charge of the EO. Okay. So I figured you speak him in with Bob the Page. Right Bob the Page is his understudy. He's a Western Mass guy and got us really the money for the Western Mass. For the record, I think we're really fortunate to try to be the contractor. Yeah, I've had a really good experience with them. Yeah, it's They're exciting in the local contract. Local. Local. You can yeah. walk over to the office and play. Did you get lunch downstairs? Yeah, you could get lunch downstairs, thank you. <laughs> okay. And I know he's excited too, so I'm going to put it in. Wow. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So I guess one of the questions we have maybe the building committee could keep us surprised because there's a couple trees that we'd like to be able to stay that are not I'm sorry. Uh, that are not in the way of the construction, but they're going to be inside the contractor's fence. And that we feel like they should be able to stay if they get damaged, they get damaged, but it would help yeah. the overall. I know. That should be site. in the landscape drawings and the site drawings. They were in marked to be removed. Originally they were there, but their elevation around them doesn't change, which is kind of okay. strange. Then, then that's a question we should ask SMMA to coordinate with. And you bring that up again, I had two conversations going on later at once. So there, there are two trees. One is a full-size tree, one is more of a medium-sized ornamental tree, that where they're located, their elevation doesn't change in the finished change of slope and drainage and everything else, but they're inside the contractor's fence. So they're scheduled to be removed, and originally they weren't. So our question is, can they stay? And if they get damaged, they get damaged. It's not a big deal, but if they don't, it only helps the finished look of the project when it's done. Because right now we have two more large trees to take down and we've then removed all shade down there. So you're saying these other trees are going to stay in that area? We're hoping to be. Well, we're asking, I feel like someone who I just has designed this could answer my understanding, the two that you're talking about, are they the two that are near the animal science building? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll bring them. I'll yeah, they abut the asphalt parking lot, which isn't scheduled to be disturbed well, at all. The, the red leaf Norway is on the plan to stay. That's the one in the corner by the football field, okay. closest here. Yes. The Catalpa tree was scheduled to come down, and that's by where the cars are. Yes. But on the other side of where the driveway to the parking lot is, there's a planting bed that has a yes. small tree. That one we would like to keep because it's established. Um, we could remove the stuff around it if we have to remove stuff around it, but if, but if the tree itself would be able to stay it seems far enough away from everything that it won't be in the way of anything. And then the elevation drawings don't show that changing at all. Right. Sometimes I could put some tree protection around it to kind of save it. So we could do that too. Yeah, be a discussion. Can you put at least run a drip, drip line for the canopy? But so the bigger one would be a little harder. But yeah, you could. I always move it later. Right. You know, shrink it. Right. I guess we would need someone to communicate you, you I wrote it down to get the That's the kind of thing that should be easy if we can get out ahead of it. Right. Yeah. That'll be something for the That was the thought, so. Yes. I can just put it up there now so we can use more color. Anything else? Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.